Hello and welcome to a new edition of Loxon Explained, the format for technology enthusiasts, Loxon fans and of course our Loxon partners. Over the past few weeks and months we've brought out a few Loxon Spotlight videos where we've looked at some of our reference projects and the technology that's involved within them. However we've thought of a new idea, let's look at getting started with your mini server. So Nico what are we going to be doing today? So today we're going to be looking at the mini server family and we're going to look at every mini server and what is it going to be best suited for. Of course, we're going to start with a mini server, which is going to be the perfect dinner amount solution for a new build. And that is because it already has three technology on board, which is our main wire technology. And you can pull cables direct to the mini server, connect your three devices, like your spots, your presence sensors, touches and more and also has locks on link, which means that you can connect your mini server to multiple different extensions and suit all your needs. And it's also very flexible, so it can expand in the future. Now with the mini server Go, the mini server Go is perfect for retrofits and renovations. It's equipped with our airbase, which is perfect for connecting with our wireless devices. But not to worry, you can also connect to our air devices via our mini server. You just need to add an airbase extension. But what about the mini server compact? Nico, perhaps you could tell us more. Now the newest addition to the family is going to be the mini server compact. So mini server compact is going to be the best of both worlds. It does have the air technology from the mini server go. It does have link and tree from the mini server. And also on top of that, it includes our tree turbo protocol, which means that the mini server compact is ready to connect the stereo extension to connect to speakers and enjoy your music. Now, with that being said, what is the mini server compact going to be best for? It's going to be best for hospitality. So Cameron, can you tell us a little bit more about hospitality projects? Yeah, so the mini server compact is perfect for hospitality projects. And I'll take the example of our campus. Our campus, we've got hotel rooms, restaurant, auditorium, and of course, office space. Now we needed a way that we could fit as much technology as possible into a small form factor. The mini server compact has got air, tree and link tree turbo as Nico mentioned and this allows us to put all the technology into one place but you're not just limited to hospitality projects it's perfect for commercial houses so really is there any limit now with that in mind let's quickly discuss cabling and powering the devices so both the mini server compact and the mini server are 24 volt devices and we get a question quite frequently is the device PELF or SELF well we can do both However, we do have a recommendation. In a self-installation, what could end up happening in the case of a lighting strike, you can induce a lot of current to the mini server and to the Ethernet port of it, and that can potentially damage the device. However, if the installation is pelved, which means that your negative of your 24 volt power supply is connected to earth, then that current has somewhere to go and the mini server can be up and running. Now, with that in mind, let's jump into config and let's look at how to configure a mini server, how to connect and more. First, we open Loxon Config. This is the software for the configuration of our mini server. You can download it for free on our website, but we will also put a link in the video description. Firstly, how do I know which mini server is the right one to connect to? Should there be multiple mini servers within the network? I can start the search and then I can easily determine based on the serial number, which is the correct mini server. In my case, the mini server has the serial number 504F94 a04A41 and the host name defaults to ms4A41 so always the last four digits of the serial number now i can connect to the mini server so of course the first question is what is my username and what is my password when the mini server is delivered it will be in its factory state and it will have the default username and password which is admin for both both written in lowercase. Now it's very important you change this immediately for security, but we do have a feature built in so that Locks on Config does tell you that you have to change your password when you first save your program into the mini server. It is worth noting that you will be unable to use our remote connect service or external access if you do not change the default password. But for the first connection, we just enter admin, admin, and then connect. So now, after we're connected, we have to configure the mini server. And for this, we just click here on the mini server, which in my case is currently named Untitled. Then in the ribbon here at the top, we click Configure Mini Server. 
We will open this window, which now there are three tabs, and we have to make some general setting adjustments, for example the description of the mini server. Now this could be the family name of your customer, or it could be the name of the project. So in my case, I'm just going to name it my locks on smart home. Then of course, we have to enter the address. So firstly, the street, country, postal code, and city. Now why is this important? This is important so that the mini server knows where it's located. For features like automatic shading, we don't want to be shading windows where the sun isn't going to be affecting it. But also daylight related features so that you can configure your outside lighting to turn on at sunset, but then turn off again at sunrise. So let's enter our address here. This is the Forum Station Road, here in the UK. The postal code is RG74RA, and we're in Thiel. Once you've done this, we can head over to the Network tab. Now here in the Network tab, you have the option to select DHCP or Static, and this is just allowing you to either choose that your router assigns your mini server an IP address itself, or whether you're dictating what that IP address should be. If you're unsure, I would just discuss this with the person who's maintaining the network in the building. You also have the option to change the host name of the mini server should it be necessary. Now, if we head over to the external access tab, this allows us to determine whether the mini server can be accessed remotely or not, and whether you're using our remote connect service, which is free, or whether you want to use port forwarding. You also have the option to determine whether this mini server can be configured remotely. Of course, you may want to access the app remotely, so that you can check on the security of the building, whether the lights are on and off. But you may not want any configuration changes to be done when not connected to the mini server locally. And then we just press apply and send to the mini server and the mini server will proceed to reboot. Cool, that was easy, wasn't it? Now let's address something else. If you have any data concerns, you really shouldn't. And that is because the mini server is not storing any data to the cloud. The only information that we need from it is going to be the serial number and we're going to be able to see the current version of the mini server and whether or not the device is actually online. Now to do that, you can register your mini server in your part of portal and then it's up and running. No port forwarding required. And if you want to run the mini server completely offline, yes, that is absolutely possible, but you're going to lose the ability to control your house whenever you're away and you're not going to be able to add new functionality if the installer is not on site. Now, with that being said, what did we talk about today? We talked about the different mini servers that we have, the mini server, mini server going, mini server compact. We've looked into config, how to configure one, briefly touched on cabling, and last but not least, address your data concerns. Now, with that in mind, what can you expect next? And also naming them within config and then looking at some of the basic configuration. Now, with that in mind, we'll be looking at the wired variant being tree, and some of the wireless devices being air. So we'll pick out a few of our components, pair the devices, and then get started with the configuration. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Until, Until next time, time bye, bye for now. For now.